On the morning of December 3, 1984, a disaster occurred at a chemical plant in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, India, the consequences of which still have a negative impact on the environment and the health of the people of India. About 42 tons of poisonous vapors of methyl isocyanate were released into the atmosphere. 3,000 people died within the first 76 hours. Another 15,000 died within a few years. The number of affected people has now exceeded half a million. The true cause of the disaster has never been determined, but even 36 years after the tragic events, the people of Bhopal continue to fall ill and die from soil and water contaminated with the deadly poison. America helps. The story of the construction of the combine in Bhopal began back in 1969. At that time, the population of the town with its picturesque lake and beautifully preserved historic buildings was just over 100,000 people. The Indian authorities were extremely concerned about attracting foreign capital to the country to develop agriculture and create new jobs. The American chemical company, Union Carbide, managed to find an interested party. The giant subsidiary in India had 14 plants. Initially it was planned to import some of the required chemicals to Bhopal to produce several insecticide, but eventually high competition on the Indian market forced the plant to master its own production of hazardous components. This process required highly skilled personnel and active financial investments that investors had not made since the plant was built. To top it all off, a bad harvest in 1980 triggered a sharp drop in demand for several. Union Carbide tried to sell the loss-making plant, but no one was willing to buy it. Blatant negligence. The managers of Union Carbide focused exclusively on generating super profits by locating their production in developing countries and on the recruitment of low-paid staff. No one cared about the educational level of local specialists who dealt with high-tech and extremely dangerous types of production. Two months after the disaster, the New York Times published the results of its investigation. The article discussed several gross violations by employees of the Bhopal plant and the top managers of Union Carbide. It turned out that during the 15 years of operation the chemical plant had been operating on monstrously obsolete equipment. Workers repeatedly witnessed regular internal leaks of methyl isocyanate. At the same time, the instruments did not reflect the actual condition of the tanks with hazardous substances. In order to save on personnel costs, the safety inspector, whose name remains unknown, was fired. The rest of the plant's employees did not have the necessary qualifications and knowledge to operate the equipment and had no idea how to proceed in the event of a serious leak. A few hours before the explosion, the neutralizer tubes were flushed with water. There were no special valves on the equipment, which caused the alkaline and sodium hydroxide liquid to leak straight into the barrel with dozens of tons of hazardous poison. The amount of methyl isocyanate in the tank was 42 times the norm. At the time of the accident, which killed 18,000 people, the plant's safety system had long been out of order, and the gas neutralizer, flare tower, and fire hoses were all shut down. Even the howling sirens and alarm messages from the plant grounds after the explosion were no different from normal training activities. The White Cloud of Death On the night of December 2-3, 1984, 42 tons of the deadly poison together with hydrocyanic acid, cyanide, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide were released into the atmosphere. The dense white cloud descended unnoticed directly on the slums of Bhopal, which were located in the immediate vicinity of the factory unchecked. The incomprehensible residents awoke to unbearable coughing, burning in their eyes and throat. Many died of suffocation on the spot, some were still able to go to the nearest hospital for help. But there was nothing they could do at the medical facility either. The doctors in Bhopal were not given any information about the fact of the leak and what substances had been released into the atmosphere. The management of the corporation zealously kept the trade secret. As a result, thousands of abandoned people died long and painful deaths in their homes or in hospital beds. Most of the victims were children. Generosity of investors. The management of Union Carbide tried for several years to prove that it had nothing to do with the man-made disaster and that the leakage of the hazardous substance was the result of sabotage on the plant premises. However, in 1987, in an out-of-court settlement, the victims of the tragedy received $470 million. It is noteworthy that investors did not allocate a single cent to eliminate the consequences of the man-made disaster. None of the executives of the investors were jailed for their crime. Moreover, in 2001, Dow Chemical, an international chemical company, took over Union Carbide, claiming that it had nothing to do with the Bhopal explosion, much less the aftermath of the disaster. 
It was not until June 7, 2010 that a court in India found the seven now former executives of the Bhopal plant guilty and sentenced them to two years imprisonment and a fine of 100,000 rupees. Today, the plant is partly sold as scrap metal, but the exploded tanker still stands where it was in 1984. The entire area around the plant is contaminated with chemicals dangerous to the health of all living things. People living in the city are still forced to suffer from severe chronic diseases. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.